Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. After reviewing Sleepy Hollow, the Tim Burton film that I really enjoy, I forgot to mention that the Blu-ray that I picked up recently at Walmart for five bucks had a solid transfer. It looks better than ever in HD. Uh, I didn't spot any digital noise reduction, DNR for short, or edge enhancement, double E's for short. <laughs> so it looks better than ever. In HD. So now I'm going to review another Tim Burton film that holds a special place in my heart and I'm going to sum it up with one name that I'm going to be said that I'm going to say three times. Yes. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! That's right. The ghost with the most himself, who's a bio-exorcist, that's played by Michael Keaton. You also got Alec Baldwin, <laughs> with his head, of course, <laughs> and glasses, too, and Gina Davis. Yeah, they both played uh, the couple Adam and Barbara uh, Madeline. So, yeah, they're the ones who live at this... Yeah, it's a very nice house. It's very tall. Uh, has everything and those three right here are the Dietz family who bought the place yeah Charles along with uh, Delia and the daughter Lydia all right here yeah. this is supposed to be the 20th anniversary deluxe edition that came out in 2008 that was 10 years ago but now this movie is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Yep, since this year. <laughs> but unfortunately, the Blu-ray deserves better. The only thing they contain are free hilarious episodes. Yes, free hilarious episodes of the animated series that aired on ABC and later on Fox. It already had the complete set from Shelf Factory that was released in 2013. Uh, I don't have the, the set though, unfortunately. I wish I could pick it up. And I hope I do someday because I really enjoy the animated series. Yeah, they, they played it uh, in reruns on Nickelodeon and I think Cartoon Network also played it in reruns as well at the time. But I really enjoyed it. And I loved it. But the film, however, became my all-time favorite Tim Burton film. In fact, I would put this right up there with Batman, along with Batman Returns, Peavy's Big Adventure, um, Edward Scissorhands, and so on and so forth. <laughs> but my least favorite Tim Burton film will always be Planet of the Apes. Yeah, the remake that he did, or... Be imagining, as you like to call it. I'm sorry, because that film is a piece of shit. But hey, <laughs> there you go. Um, so, came in a regular Blu ray case. Um, let's see if I can get this out. It has the guide. Um, but here's what it looks like uh, the Blu ray is right here. And this is the uh, soundtrack CD sampler, so it has some uh, half of the songs um, from the movie, which is mostly the the songs by Harry Belafonte and the score by uh, Danny Elfman, you know, the main theme. So it's really cool. Yeah, as well as the half of the score here. Uh, yeah, the Beetlejuice, the Beginner's Guide to Seeing Ghosts. Uh, it's just a... Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can try to get to it. Um, man, this is going to be a big one. Uh, this is what it looks like. Yeah, <laughs> it's really big. Um, and it's just a Port Norris or Blu-ray, so 
they don't use that anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put this away uh, safely, perfectly. I just want to see if I can put this in uh, perfect shape uh, so we don't have to have any problems. Okay. Uh, right. So yes, Beetlejuice. You wouldn't believe how many times I've seen this movie. I saw this ever since I was a kid. My family uh, took me to see this at a very young age. I was like two years old, almost pushing free. <laughs> and I remember enjoying it so much. I mean, it, it's a bizarre, weird, strange, but awesome uh, horror fantasy comedy that's so memorable to this day that it just never gets old. I mean, it, it's just fun. It really is. I mean, yeah, you can even see the back right here. <laughs> of course. Um, I thought uh, Michael Keaton did an awesome job playing the role of Beetlejuice because, after all, this was his first Tim Burton film that he ever did before he was chosen to play Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman. And without a doubt... He was definitely the right choice to play Batman. Just as he was the right choice to play Beetlejuice. I know they were talking about doing a sequel to the film. They tried to do that back in 1990 with Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. But... <laughs> that never happened. Um, so, of course, over the years it's been in development hell. So they were planning on actually working on it in 2012. Um, in fact, they wanted um, everyone to reprise their roles, even though a few people are already no longer with us, like Robert Goulet, uh, Glenn Shattuck, as well as um, um, Sylvia Sidney, you know, all come to mind. So we won't be able to see those guys again. But uh, they're probably going to add some new people joining in. See how this goes. I mean, but I would love to see uh, Michael Keaton reprise the role again, along with uh, Renata Ryder as Lydia. Um, hopefully, Jeffrey Jones will be available. I mean, he's probably already got out of jail. Uh, Catherine O'Hara would be nice to reprise her role too, you know, as Delia. Yeah, of course, Jeff Jones plays Charles. Um, I also would have loved to see um, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis reprise their roles, too, as Adam and Barbara. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the case. <laughs> um, also to say that this is based on a, on a story by Michael McDowell, not to be confused with the actor. Um, this is an author who's no longer with us. But he was the one who created Beetlejuice, right here. I, I know they had to do some changes here and there, and, and at the time, Tim Burton wanted to do his originality, so this is exactly what he was going for. After his success with PB's uh, Big Adventure, he had Paul Rubens as PB Herman, that was his first film, that leads to that, and plus, Tim Burton was doing a lot of short films, mostly from Disney such as uh, Vincent and Frankie Weenie all come to mind. So that's always the case. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, the transfer in this movie is very solid. Uh, it's that BC-1, but very solid presentation as it looked yeah, back in the day. I definitely would love to see a re-release of this Blu-ray. if. So now that uh, Shaw Factory has a deal with Warner Brothers, I could definitely see Screen Factory picking this up and put all the new features joining in. Maybe Michael Keaton and maybe the rest will probably have uh, new interviews. So, I mean, they probably would love to talk about this. And maybe Tim Burton might do a commentary. You know, and I would have loved to see that. Yeah. So that would be cool. 
And yes, again, the special features are the TV show with the trailer and audio only. You know, so you get to hear the music but not the dialogue. <laughs> Nothing special there. But again, you know, this movie deserves special features. Because after all, this was a huge hit. Um, its budget was $15 million. But worldwide and the box office alone made up to $73.7 million. And critics really enjoyed the film, too. They really loved it. Um, well, except for Siskel and Ebert, though. And maybe a few. I'm sorry, but I disagree with them. I disagree with them with their review. I really enjoyed Beetlejuice. It's one of my all-time favorites. Never gets old. It's fast-paced, too. 92 minutes, to be exact. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to it, because... It's showtime! <laughs> Stars Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. Yeah, they pronounce it, which is also named after the planet. Yeah. Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis, Renata Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, Jeffrey Jones, Annie McEnroe, uh, Glenn Shattuck, Sylvia Sidney, Rob Goulet, Marie Cheeham, Dick Cabot, yes, Dick Cabot, who actually had his own talk show, also no longer with us, uh, but he was great. Susan Kellerman, Adele Lutz, Simi Bow, Carmen Filippi, Patrice Martinez, yes, from the movie The Free Amigos. She plays a receptionist in this film, hard to believe. Uh, Tony Cox, yes, Tony Cox, who later went on to do uh, films like Friday and Bad Santa. So he dresses up uh, in the costume and the makeup. And he's also voiced by Jack Angel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's written by Michael McDowell, the author of uh, Beetlejuice, uh, along with his partner Larry Wilson and Warren Scatterin, and it's directed by Tim Burton. The movie begins set in a Connecticut town. We meet two wonderful couple, Adam and Barbara Maitland, both played by Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, and they decide to spend their vacation together. Now, Adam is just working on his entire model of the town in his attic. And Barbara is just like spending time, you know, in the house, you know, cleaning around, doing everything. But they both bought some gifts together so that way they can spend their time on vacation for only two weeks. Unfortunately, a real estate agent named Jane Butterfield, who's played by Annie McRow, decided to sell their home but they refused. They don't want that to happen because they're still living there. So anyway, what happened was um, by the time they decided to go get all their surprise, so just so they can get ready to go on their trip, um, they, have, they suddenly uh, spotted a dog right in the middle of the road and they actually, and Barbara swerved on their car and all the way straight to the uh, the Red Barn Barn House Tunnel. They crash all the way straight and you know while the car is right on the front and and the board started to go and that's where you see the dog on the board and then when the dog got out of there the car suddenly plunged uh, into the river. So then they got out, they're all wet so they went back to the house and then they begin to realize that they were really dead the whole time. So Adam decided to retrace their steps as they cannot recall how they got home. And then they suddenly wound up in a desert world where you started spotting all these sandworms uh, appearing. Yeah, giant sandworms. <laughs> 
it's, it's later known as Saturn. So yes, I guess we're going for the astronomy right here. <laughs> That's what I noticed too, because uh, they even had some planets uh, in the world too, uh, on, on the sky. So they're pulled back and even though they were gone for less than a minute, they begin to discover that, yes, they were actually ghosts. So now they have a handbook for the recently deceased that they found uh, in their house. And they had to read all their steps on what to do. So it looks to me like they never did survive the crash after all. Yeah, that's sad. So the house is being sold by the new owners, which is the Dietz family, as they arrive from New York City. Uh, we meet uh, Charles Dietz, who's played by Jeffrey Jones, who's a former real estate developer. He has a wife, um, his second wife, named Delia, who's a sculpture, uh, played by Catherine O'Hara, and his golf daughter, Lydia, played by Renata Ryder who's um, an inspiring photographer. Yeah, she gets to take a lot of pictures through her Polaroid camera. <laughs> and yes, um, Delia can do all of her sculptures. You know, she loves all the those uh, amazing the giant sculptures that she loves to do because she's really into it. Um, so they took the house uh, and also they have uh, an interior designer named Orfo, who's played by Glenn Shedick. So they all live together, and they're planning on trying to develop their house that they're about to live in, and try to do some major changes, you know, do some construction and all that. But meanwhile, Adam and Barbara are trying to figure out uh, all the steps that they had to do from the handbook. So they actually drew a door for the attic, because I know Lydia suddenly uh, got a skeleton key from uh, from Jane as she came over, just so that she can open all the doors, including the attic. <laughs> so, so Adam just uh, drew a door just so he can enter through a uh, a brick wall, and this is where they wound up inside the office where we begin to see a lot of dead patients all around. Yeah, you saw like a lot of them too and I already show you on the, the Blu-ray uh, guide right there <laughs> of all those characters as we as we know. Oh, yeah. I mean there's even a guy who's smoking a cigarette <laughs> and he's, he's yeah, he's all blown to pieces and he's like he's trying to cut down himself. Um, there was uh, yeah, there was that shotgun guy with, with a small head uh, and has that uh, sort of like a pineapple type of hairstyle. <laughs> and all the rest too. I mean, yes, there's even a girl which had her body cut to pieces. You have one, one side and, and her legs on the other. <laughs> there's even a guy who's, who got run over by, I think, a car or a truck. So that's how flat he is, so he just goes straight. Yes, they went inside the uh, Needle World, and they went straight into all these rooms that they had to go to. And that's where they meet um, the Maitland's own caseworker, Juno, who's played by Sylvia Sidney. She informs them that they must remain in the house for only 125 years, till then. Um, because they were also planning on having the Deeses out of the house, but it was up to them to scare them away by actually wearing sheets and and trying to you know come up with their own plan by like, for example, you know she they hide in the closets. Uh, <laughs> she she was like, yes, uh, Barbara was like all hanged up and <laughs> and she rips her face open uh, while. Uh, the next scene, the uh, Barbo inside the next room, which you know, Charles really wants because he didn't want this to be remodeled, uh, while the rest of the house had to be. Uh, <laughs> uh, Barbo had to had to cut off uh, Adam's head, and <laughs> yeah, she was holding the knife, and 
and her, his head, and, <laughs> and then of course he had to run all, all the way as fast as he can to lock the, the attic. <laughs> of course, yeah. But I know that happened uh, already after. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. I just, I just want to get ahead of myself too. So yes. So apparently Juno had um, had discovered that there's a, a bio exorcist, which they actually found out about um, through the handbook. It was an advertisement uh, by the name of Beetlejuice, who's played by Michael Keaton. Uh, they were trying to find out about the guy, but apparently uh, we begin to know that this was uh, Juno's former assistant. Uh, yeah, he's he's the ghost with the most to scare away to actually um, got ahead of himself. So now he, he now Beetlejuice is all alone inside the world and you know, doing what he does best, you know, becoming the fit of the job to uh, to scare off the Dietzes away. So yes, that's why you know, Adam and Barbara decided to choose uh, Beetlejuice to see how how this will work. But by the time he f spotted uh, Beetlejuice, yeah, this is where he's always uh, coming up with all these pros. Uh, and the fact the way he talks like uh, <laughs> one of those Carl salesmen that you often see, you know, with that sudden accent. Yeah, yeah kind of like Carl Wolverton if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> but creepier. <laughs> but he doesn't have a dog named Spot either. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm from Southern California, so I probably already know who Kyle Burbington is, and God rest his soul. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that that was their plan. They wanted to hire Beetlejuice to do the job, but they had to continue to do whatever they can before something bad's going to happen. So this is where, again, you know, they had to wear the sheets to become ghosts, and... Lydia suddenly spotted them, as she even spotted it by the time she was trying to open the attic. She was like taking pictures of them, and they even found out that the couple was very invisible. So now, she's the only one that can spot uh, Adam and, and Barbara. Mostly because she read the book, well, Handbroke for the Recently Deceased. But things started to get much worse when Beetlejuice decided to uh, pull a plank on, on scaring the Dietzes. Um, well, at this rate, Adam and Barbara did pull the pranks on their own you know, before him. But then again, it's more memorable than ever by actually uh, playing the, the song Deo, the Banana Boat song uh, by Harry Belafonte. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes. I'm going to talk about that afterwards. Um, yeah, where they started to uh, possess the the Dietzes uh, along with their their guest, yeah, which includes uh, Bernard, who's and you know, Bernard and Grace, who are played by Diff Cabot and Susan Kellerman, all join in, and Adele Lutz. Yeah. So it really started to get worse when Beetlejuice decided to disguise himself as a rattlesnake, a giant rattlesnake, to scare them off. Yeah. If you already know that the entire room is all decorated and in, in good taste, I mean they had to change everything to make it even better. Like they they made the entire room look like all all metal and steel and all all the design and everything. It was it was special. So Juno had called uh, Adam and Barbara in into her office, yeah, and this is where you see all these football players appearing, all dead. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, acting like Juno is their coach. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Um, but then both, uh, as I already showed you on the Blu-ray, uh, from the Blu-ray guy, uh, they showed uh, both Adam and Barbara started to disguise themselves very uh, strange way just so they could scare him off you know, while Lydia is in the attic uh, where she saw the model and that's where she spotted uh, Beetlejuice already in the Dante Inferno just relaxing and just says I'm the ghost with the most babe 
<laughs> so there's a lot of uh, supernatural events that were happening to them, and so Maxi Dean, who's played by Robert Goulet, uh, decided to pitch um, an idea to use uh, the place as a tourist uh, hot spot. So this will be a new uh, plan for the house, and, or any other. The only thing is, he wanted proof for the ghost. We'll see how this will happen. Um, it only gets worse from there when Orphel suddenly found the handbook for the recently deceased and decided to perform a sance so they could revive both Adam and Barbara together, which apparently they started to grow completely old. Yeah, and they're already fading away at this point. But Lydia decided to um, contact Beetlejuice to see if this will work, to help him out, uh, to save both Adam and Barbara. But at this rate, Beetlejuice actually wanted to marry Lydia instead and just pull a lot of pranks on Orpho and, again, Charles and Delia. And that's where we, we have the... <laughs> And this is a scene where uh, Beetlejuice was like taking, was already uh, wearing the, uh, the the black and white suit that he has on, and yeah, he even has the line, it's showtime. And just when he was about to prepare himself to get married to Lydia, yeah, he's, he was taking out the ring, and but it, it was from his uh, previous uh, wife, and he said she meant nothing to me. Nothing at all. So trying to grab the ring and uh, Adam and and uh, Barbara was already restoring themselves back to life, uh, and they're trying to say the name three times so that way you know they can stop them. But Beetlejuice just controls them. So Beetlejuice actually took off uh, Adam's teeth and. The teeth started to <laughs> jump around, sort of like playing a clip over here. <laughs> that was pretty funny. But then uh, he sends him to um, back into his world, uh, which is the model, of course. And um, so he had to drive around, and then then Barbara decided to say the name as well, but Beetlejuice just, just tries to shut them off. Yeah, by putting the zipper and and then the uh, the metal plates to close their mouth, and he had to send Barbara into the uh, yes, the desert world where that's where we spot the um, the sandworm, and then Barbara just came to the rescue, riding on the sandworm to go straight at uh, Beetlejuice. So Beetlejuice. Uh, was eaten alive. Which at the end uh, we do see uh, you know, Beetlejuice uh, inside the Needle World uh, office and that's where we saw a witch doctor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Beetlejuice just steals the ticket number, you know, number four, so that way he'd be next. Because uh, he had to give him all the thousands and but then the witch doctor suddenly shrinks uh, Beetlejuice's head. <laughs> That was funny. So finally, at the end of the movie, the Dietzes and the Malins had agreed to live in harmony at their house. Uh, Lydia now goes to uh, the school for girls. Apparently she got a C for a science test, but the rest were A's, so there we go. <laughs> Including her uh, A on the math test. So now that's where they dance to the song, uh, Jump in the Line. Shake, 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 Sonora, shake it all the time. Work, 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 Sonora, all the time. Jump in the line, and go ahead and find. Okay, I believe you. Okay, I don't. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sort of uh, fucking messing up these. <laughs> um, but that that's what happened at the end of the movie, so it was really fun. Um, okay, um, I'm going to get back to my favorite scene in the movie where... When they did play the, the Harry Balafonte song, Deo, the Banana Bull song, yeah. Deo, 
day oh they like come and we want to go home day is it day is it day is it day is it day yo they like come and we want to go home work all night and a drink a rum they like come and we want to go home stop blink quickly like Charlantula they like come and we want to go home Come on, Mr. Tally, man, carry me banana. Be like, come in, we want to go home. Come, Mr. Tally, man, carry me banana. Be like, come in, we want to go home. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. They like, come in, we want to go home. Eh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, but that was one of my favorite scenes where. They were all possessed, and they started dancing the Calypso to that song, and <laughs> and this is where all the lobster suddenly pops up, and they just grab their faces, and they and they fell off their chairs. <laughs> oh, just hilarious. Uh, wonderful cast right there, um, including Michael Keaton. Definitely... Uh, the right choice to play Beetlejuice. I mean, he really had fun using that sudden accent and has all these funny quotes <laughs> that you can think of. Uh, uh, whatever quotes that he, he he says is just hilarious to me. Um, anyway, as well as um, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, they were very good together. They had a lot of great chemistry, hard to believe. Probably the first time I ever uh, discovered Alec Baldwin in the movie because I know he went on to do films like uh, The Hunt for Red October, yeah, Jack Ryan, the young Jack Ryan, and then he went on to do uh, The Shadow and many others that follow. Uh, he was also in the movie uh, Miami Blues, uh, come to mind, and yes, uh, Glenn Berry, Glenn Ross, and even Mission Impossible sequels, well, the last two. Uh, yeah, all come to mind. <laughs> and Malice, yeah. And of course, Gina Davis uh, was previously in the movie The Fly. Yeah, with Jeff Goldblum, so she was very good in this, too. Yeah, Renata Ryder, this was definitely um, after her, her debut in the film Lucas. I think that was her debut. Uh, the, the movie with Charlie Sheen and... Uh, yeah, Corey Haim is no longer with us. I always thought that she was very quirky for the role, and she really shows how she can do it. Yeah, this, this is another reason why I love Renee Ryder. Because, after all, she's now on the TV show Stranger Things. <laughs> yes. Catherine O'Hara from SCTV. And yeah, Jeffrey Jones, who was previously in the movie uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, as the principal. Going after Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Uh, they were all good. Um, of course, Robert Goulet is a singer. You know, was a singer. No longer with us, but he's done a lot of stuff. I guess he, you know, Tim Burton was a big fan of him. And yeah, they, they had a lot of great actors in this movie joining in and. I love the special effects they chose. I mean, it had a mix of stop motion animation that they put in. You know, with the sandworms, it was very creepy to see that. Uh, along with all the the ghouls and and the ghosts and all all these monsters around. You know, all dead. The way they created them was so uh, amazing, creepy, weird. I was like, wow. I mean, and and this was cool for Tim Burton to do a film like this because this is how he started to get his exterior for all of his uh, gothic uh, movies that he does. Yeah, because he is gothic himself, so he always loves to do all his creativity of adding a lot of German expressionism and all the dark uh, elements to put into it. And it did have horror elements in the film too, so it was really cool. So I felt like this was, um, it had an imagination and originality, even though uh, Burden was really having some problems, you know, trying to f 
read all the scripts of how the story was going to become. So this was something brand new for him to do. Yeah. So this is the first film he was doing, as we all know, even though he was a bankable director. But nevertheless. Um, I also love the moment where Adam had created the entire model of the small Connecticut town. <laughs> that's everything that's all detailed and and the scene where they actually had to say uh, Beetlejuice's name three times that they wound up going all the way inside the model and this is where they found him on the tombstone that says here lies Beetlejuice and, they, and it's right next to the uh, neon sign where his name is being shown twice yeah and by the time he pops up of course just when <laughs> They had to dig all the way straight into those contour um, grassy field. Yeah, it looked like those ones that you see uh, on one of those contour pillows and, and bed sheets. Yeah, I had one of those before. They were very comfortable. They also used for bed protection. <clears throat> so they dig all the way deep. You know, Adam had to dig and all these uh, cut out cardboard boxes with uh, yeah, fragile on there and. And this is where they found his his coffin, and that's where he pops up. And this is where he begins to uh, have his introduction. Yeah, he talks with that sudden accent of his, and comes up with all these funny jokes. <laughs> yeah, he can also be a pervert too at times. And, and he also loves to hang out with the ladies at the Dante Inferno. <laughs> A strip bar where lots of ladies go by and you know, just to have fun. Everything. Also, the fact that he <laughs> gets to cover their mouths and also gets to cover their mouths and starts to talk in their voices that way. And I know at times he can even <laughs> even have Barbara even speak uh, in Beetlejuice's voice that way. So I, I love that. He even tells him if he can be scary and all sorts of things. And even at the end he even says, NICE FUCKING MODEL! Ah, <laughs> oh, just fun. But, um, from a story that's based on Michael McDowell, who created the character, this is really something. But it was very impressive for its time. I love the sets, too. I love the design that they did. Especially when they created the... the the country house that they had, the, the very tall country house, and how they later uh, remodeled it to make it more uh, wonderful and, and very uh, artsy in a way. I, I, I gotta say, you know, uh, for a, a sculptor, for a sculptress, I mean, she really had a lot of taste, yeah. Uh, Delia. Um, I really love that. And I love the score by Danny Elfman. Yeah, Tim Burton's always using Danny Elfman for this theme. Especially at the beginning of the movie where we begin to hear the more familiar theme that would later be heard in, in movie trailers that follows. Yeah, but it's still one of the most memorable scores ever to date. <laughs> and I really love that. Uh, I gotta say, I was really happy that Michael Keaton finally got the role as Batman uh, after this movie, because it really shows that he can really do it. Plus, he's very good as a serious actor, too. I mean, if you saw the movie Clean and Sober that same year that Beetlejuice came out, or I think it came before that, or whatever, um, it really shows that he can definitely uh, take a serious role. And it... And that's what really helped uh, play the role for, for Batman and Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And he really loved playing that character, no matter what. I mean, if you look at all the interviews that he does, he really loves to talk about it. And this is exactly why we needed that in the special features of the Blu-ray. Come on, man. This is an awesome movie. And this is, of course, done by the Geffen uh, Film Company. Yeah, 
owned by David Geffen. At the time, uh, his company was was under the distribution of Warner Brothers, and the company that would also release uh, films like Little Shop of Horrors, uh, Lost in America, Risky Business, so on and so forth. I wish I could get the TV series uh, on DVD. I want to get the complete series someday if I can ever find it. Uh, hopefully they have it for a good price. Because I really love the show. <laughs> Nevertheless. Um, but yes, um, no doubt about it, Beetlejuice is an awesome movie. It never gets old. I never get tired of it. Yeah, I mean, no matter when it's on TV or whenever I get a chance to watch it, I, I just always put it on and just have fun with it. <laughs> that's all that matters. So anyway, that's Beetlejuice. And I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.